want you to open your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 2, verses, begin with verse 17. We're going to read two verses. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams, and on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to share your word this morning. I ask God that you would speak to hearts. I ask God that you would anoint lives. I ask, Father God, that you would open our ears to hear. And I ask, Father God, that you would give us spiritual eyes. Amen. Lord, that we would be able to see what you want us to do, that we would catch that vision, catch that dream that you, you have desire us to have, that we would know, we would understand perfectly the calling you have in our lives, Father. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. The young man back here said, I'm not that young. <laughs> You're younger than I am. <laughs> And I'm still young. <laughs> Y'all didn't know that, did you? I, Abraham lived 175 years, and I'm, I haven't even lived half that yet. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So anybody under, uh, what, what would it be? Anyway. <laughs> if you're a good mathematician, anybody under that, you're still young, okay? Praise the Lord. The Bible says, I will pour my spirit in the last days on your sons and your daughters, and they will see visions. They will dream dreams. They will, they will catch prophetic messages from God. God will begin to pour out his spirit in the last days. I've got news for you. We're living in the last days. When it snows in Cairo and it doesn't snow in Moscow, we're living in the last days. Do you understand that? And, and I want you to begin to, to believe God for great things. I want you, in fact, at, at the end of this service, we're going to anoint you so that in 2014, God will begin to reveal himself mightily in your life. He will begin to open your spiritual eyes so that you can see. And so I want you to listen closely to what God's doing because God's going to do it for you too. Amen. Now, 50 years ago today, a man got up, and uh, not today, 50 years ago, in this, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. got up and said, I have a dream. And we, we know that he changed America with his dream. We, we know just this year, a man named uh, Nelson Mandela passed away. And he changed South Africa because he, he said, I have a, um, let me read his quote, if I may. He said, I dream of an Africa which is in peace with itself. And, and I, I'm here to tell you that anybody who's changed the world for good, Anybody who has, has uh, made the world a better place, they are people that had dreams and visions. You can, you can look back through and, and, and you'll find out that there, were, uh, there was Noah and there was Abraham and there, were, there was Isaiah and there was Joseph and David and there was John the Baptist and there was Jesus. And every one of them, they changed the world because... They waited upon God until God spoke to them, until God changed their lives. And that's what God wants to do in your life today. God wants to begin to speak to you. He wants to begin to open your eyes so that you will have a dream or vision about what God wants you to do. Uh, what, what did Jesus say about people with no vision? He said, this is, he said let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind, and if, and if the blind lead the blind, they both will fall into a ditch. Now, if you don't have a vision, if you haven't heard from God, 
Uh, you're lead, you may be a leader, but you're leading the wrong way. Because God has the perfect plan. God has the perfect uh, uh, vision, the perfect direction you should go. Solomon said in, in Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18, Where there is no vision, people perish. Where there is no vision, people perish. Now, uh, Nehemiah uh, heard about Jerusalem and he was discouraged. And uh, this is in Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 2 it says, uh, The king said to me, Why is your face so sad since you are not sick? There is nothing but so sorrow of heart. So, so, uh, and then he said, so I became afraid, dreadfully afraid and said to the king, my king live forever. Why should my faith be, not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tomb, lies waste and its gates are turned down with fire? Then the king said to me, what do you request? And this is, you need to get this. So, Nehemiah said, so I prayed to the God of heaven. So I prayed to the God of heaven. Now, how is Nehemiah going to solve the problem in Jerusalem? He's not going to do it on his, on his own. Uh, in fact, uh, when he went to Jerusalem, I could just see uh, some of the guys in Jerusalem say, uh, "Oh, you're going to you're going to build the walls. Uh, are you an architect? Uh, are you a uh, builder? Are you a designer?" He says, "No, I'm just a cupbearer." How can a cupbearer do the things that Nehemiah did? I'm here to tell you that I don't care what you're doing now. I don't care whether you're a cupbearer or a maid or, or, or a dishwasher. I'm here to tell you that when God speaks to your heart, God will change your life. Amen. God can change a cupbearer into a wall builder. Amen. Did you hear what I'm saying? God can change a cupbearer into a wall builder. Amen. And, and, and uh, God has a plan for you. God has a you, You're not, it's no accident that you're in this church today. It's no accident. God has a plan for your life. And God wants you to open your eyes. Not your, uh, uh, hopefully you all of you see, or most of you do. I, I know my brother uh, needs a touch from God, but, but uh, uh, God wants to, uh, he himself can, can get a vision of what God wants to do in his life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, later on, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 12, it says, uh, then I arose in the night, I and a few men with me. I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Where did Nehemiah get his vision? Who put the vision in his heart? Who caused him to, to know what he should be doing? He, he said it himself. I, God put it in my heart what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to spend the, the month of January seeking the Lord. I, I want you to spend the month of January uh, calling upon God and uh, like, like Nehemiah did. And I want you to understand that God will begin to put it in your heart what he wants you to do. And God will begin to do great things which you don't know about. Praise the Lord. Now, the word here in vision in the Hebrew is Chazon, Chazon, Chazon is the Hebrew. And, and my, my wife uh, looked it up last night for me, and she read me this definition that was a page long, okay? And, and, uh, and I, I said, I, I'm not going to stand up there and read a page of definitions about what vision means. Let me tell you what, what a vision from God is. It's a perfect picture. A vision from God is a picture of perfection. Something he wants to do in your life that will be perfect. And if you, if you will begin to seek God, God will begin to open your eyes and give you a perfect picture of what he wants to do. A vision is the distinguishing mark of a leader. If a, if a, you're not a good leader if you don't have a vision. If you don't see what God wants to do, if you don't understand that God has a plan and a purpose for your life, 
if you don't understand that, that as a leader that you are to lead a congregation into seeking God with all their heart, if you don't understand that you, you, you're to open their eyes up so that they would not just see what's around them, but they would see God and they would see his plan for the life. The, the number one distinguishing mark of a leader is that he has a vision. Nehemiah wasn't anything but a cup, build, a cup bearer, but he had a vision. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Did you hear that? Amen. We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay, what is faith? Glad you asked that question. Uh, faith is a vision of what God wants to do in your life. Faith is a vision of what God wants to do in your life. If, you, if you're not seeking God, uh, you may think, I know what I want in my life. I know what I need. And I've got my own plans and I got my own, but I'm here to tell you that's not faith. And the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. God wants to open your spiritual eyes and, and see what, what God can do in your life. Look what happened to Abraham, okay? In, in Genesis chapter 12 and, and verse 4, it says Abraham departed. And he was 70 Five years old. No kids. 75 years and no kids. God says, if you, if you follow me, I'll make a great nation out of it. 75 years and no kids. And he had all this stuff. He had all this stuff. And he left it all in Harry to go where God told him to go. Now, he didn't understand everything that was going to happen. He didn't know everything that was going on. And, but in, in verse 7, And the Lord uh, uh, appeared unto Abraham. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham. That's important. You need, before you have a vision of anything else, you need to have a vision of God. You need, God needs to, to, to come into your life and say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the one that can take your, your, your brokenness and your broken life and the messed up life and I can take it and I can heal it and I can change it and I can make uh, greatness out of nothing. God wants to do that in your life. God wants to do that in, in each of our lives. And, and God, so God appeared to Abraham. In, in Romans chapter 4 verse 17, Paul Paul quotes this, and he says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. God who gives life, Romans 4, 17. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Did you hear what I said? He calls those things that do not exist as though they did. Now, what, what are we talking about here? Well, well, it goes on in, in uh, Romans chapter 4 and verse 19. And, and not being weak in faith, Abraham did not consider his own body now dead. In other words, he had no ability to produce children. He, he might, uh, and back then, when, when you couldn't have kids, you're a dead man. You're a living dead man, okay? And so Abraham looked, did not consider the fact that, well, I don't have kids, so I... I, I'm a dead man. He, did, he didn't even consider that. He got a vision from God. Now, not only that, but it, it goes on and it said, uh, since he was about 100 years old, uh, I tell everybody I've got four beautiful daughters. And God's going to give me a son when I'm 100. <laughs> and everybody laughs, okay? <laughs> because because it, it just doesn't happen nowadays, you know? But that, that's that's... That's what happened with Abraham, okay? God said, I'm going to give you a son. And, and, and Abraham didn't laugh, but somebody else did, you know? Her name, her name was Sarah, okay? Uh, he, Abraham didn't consider the deadness of his own body, uh, or, or then it says, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Sarah's womb was dead. 
she could not have given. There's no way. And yet Abraham did not even consider that. Why? Because God appeared to Abraham. God gave a perfect picture to Abraham. God said, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And Abraham did not waver. He, he kept looking at the picture that God had given him. He kept looking at the vision. He kept looking at the, at the, the pain that God had placed before him. This is what I'm going to do in your life, Abraham, if you'll trust me. And the Bible said, the Bible says, and he, Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Now, how could Abraham have faith for something that was impossible? Abraham was fully convinced that what he saw, what God, the picture that God gave him, he was, the vision that God gave him, he was fully convinced. The Bible says that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And God counted it to him for righteousness. Abraham knew his body was dead. Knew Sarah's body was dead. But God appeared to him. And he was fully convinced. And if you'll seek God, if you'll seek God, God will begin to show you some things. God will begin to open your spiritual eyes. And you, you think, well, I've been doing this all my life. It, it, I probably would do this until I get old and gray. And God has plans that you don't know about. And if you will seek God, if you will call out to God, I, I, that's why I'm saying in the month of January, I want you to, I, I want some of you to, like for all of you to, but I, I don't want you to kill yourself, okay? If you can't fast, don't fast, but but uh, uh, skip a meal every day or skip two meals every day or skip three meals every day or skip four meals every day. I, I don't know how often you eat, but uh, uh, spend time fasting and praying and seeking God because God wants to show you what he's going to do in your life. It, don't you think it's time? Uh, we, some of us, we have pretty well messed up our lives, okay? And it's about time that we that we lay aside the mess that we have made and that, that we say, okay, now I'm going to seek God. And God is going to open, God is going to open my spiritual eyes. He's going to give me a perfect picture and I'm going to have faith. I'm going to be able to believe that what he has shown me, he will do. That's, that's what happened with Nehemiah. So I prayed. Ne Nehemiah heard what had happened in Jerusalem. And then it says, but he went to God. But he went to God. Do you understand the difference? Everybody else was saying Jerusalem is destroyed. Jerusalem is messed up. Jerusalem is, uh, there's no way, there's no hope for Jerusalem. But Nehemiah went to God. And God gave him a vision. And in that vision, he saw a beautiful Jerusalem. He saw what God could do if he had let God work in his life. So I prayed to the God of heaven. Pray that God will open your spiritual eyes and show you what you're supposed to look like in here. Let God give you a perfect picture, not the one, not the one that you see in the mirror. Do you understand? Uh, you can only make yourself so perfect looking in the mirror. Some of you can make yourselves more perfect than I can, okay? But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about open your spiritual eyes and see what God wants to do in your life. Open your spiritual eyes and, and, and see yourself as God sees you. I, I remember the first time that that I, I that I had tongues and the interpretation. I was I, I was by myself, and 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 the Bible says you pray that you have an interpretation. So so I prayed. I I was praying. I I said, oh, 
you know, in tongues. And I said, now God, give me an interpretation. And it is amazing what God said to me. God says, oh, I, you know, I thought he'd say, oh, you're, you're so bad. You messed up Monday and Tuesday. You really blew it. And Thursday, I, I saw that mess. He didn't say that. He said to me, I love you. I have great things for you. If you will seek me, I will show you great things. If, if you will call unto me, I will, I will open your eyes and you will see my hand upon you, leading you and guiding you. And I will do great things in your life if you'll just trust me. Isn't that amazing? God wants to change the outlook you have for yourself. He wants to give you a picture of yourself the way he sees you and the way he wants to see you. And if you'll seek God, he will do it. Proverbs 29, 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. We often use this as, as a soul winning message. You know, if you don't have a vision for the lost, people are going to die. And, and it, 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 it works there. It works there. But in, in, in a sense, it's not the primary interpretation of that scripture. It really means, what that, what that really means is that, that if you don't have a vision, you will perish. Did you hear what I'm saying? If you don't have a vision, you will perish. You, you'll just, you just live your life and you'll die like everybody else. and you could, uh, Hopefully you'll go to heaven but, but God wants you to have a vision. Now, it is true that, that God gives us an open revelation. If you have a Bible on your, on your iPad or your iPhone or, or, your, or, or on paper, that, that, is a, that is an open revelation. God has given that to you. And you can learn a lot if you will just study that. God... God can do great things in your life just if you read his word. He can speak to you directly from his word. Yet in fact, God spoke to us two years ago directly from his word. He said, go to Moscow or die. And, and you know, we, my wife and I said, well, we, we, that's not much of a choice. But so we said, okay, God, we'll go. I mean, I was, I was retirement age. I could retire. Do you understand what I'm saying? I could retire. And God says, go to Moscow or die. Now, I don't want to die, so guess what? <laughs> but God speaks to, will speak to you directly from the Word of God. But God also says, in the last days, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. And, and uh, your young men shall dream, dream dreams. Excuse me. See visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. On your handmaidens and on your servants. Uh, God wants to do great things in your life. God wants to change your life. God wants to change your life. People perish because they don't understand that God has a vision for them. The ability to see in your spiritual eyes the way things ought to be. Not where you are. Not where you want to be but where you need to be. You need to open up your spiritual eyes to see not where you are, not where you want to be, but where you need to be. Because it's only where God needs you. That is where God is going to bless you. That is where God is going to prosper you. That is where God is going to do great things. Acts 2, 17, and it shall come to pass in the last day, then here again, it's quoting Joel, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. That's talking to you. It says in the last days. We are living in the last days. And, and, and I... Jesus may come before 2014, but if he doesn't, it's because God has great plans for your life. God wants to show you what he can do if you'll, you'll, you'll turn to him. Do 
you need God to give you revelation. And to show you how to make the disaster a beautiful picture in your life. It does when it says when it says without a vision people will perish. It doesn't mean die and go to hell. That word it, it means uh, well here's, here's some of the definitions here. It says to become naked, to become a zero, to be bare, to go backwards, to cast off all restraints. So you could say if, if you have no spiritual revelation, if you don't have a vision from God, if you don't have a dream from God, you will go backwards. You'll amount to nothing. You'll become a zero. You, you, you'll lose your guiding principles. You understand God wants you to have goals. God wants you to have a plan and a purpose. And if you're just going from day to day and you don't know where God wants to lead you, where are you going? You, if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to get there. Okay? You, can, uh, you, you need to have the, the plan of God for your life. It all starts with prayer. We must seek God. We need the mind of Christ. That will give us the perfect picture. Jesus, uh, Philippians 2, 2, 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Where did Jesus get his prophetic word? As he sought God. Where, where, where did, I mean, he went out every day to pray. Every day he went out to seek what God wanted to do that day. If Jesus did that. If Jesus did that, what should we be doing? You, you, think, you think Sunday's enough? No, absolutely not. Romans 12, 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for your life. God wants you to know his plan. In Revelation 29, 18. Where there is no, this is one interpretation, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. Now, do you know why people in the world are so bad? You know why? You know why sinners sin? That's what I mean. You know why? You know why sinners sin? It's because they have no revelation of Jesus Christ. And how are they going to get a revelation from Jesus Christ? How are their eyes going to be open? How are they going to see Jesus as He really is? Well, it's quite easily. It, you and I need to tell them about Jesus. We and we need to demonstrate. Jesus working in our lives and when they see Jesus in us they will say I want what they've got now there's always going to be some people that say, say I'm, I'm going to do it my own way I'm going to be my own man I'm going to go my own way uh, uh, but the reason why we have so many problems in the world is because uh, people are blinded their eyes are blinded they, they cannot see uh, that's, Paul said I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of death? Paul understood the need that he had. He saw how terrible he was. He says, who can save me? Well, we know who saved Paul. He was on the road to Damascus and God knocked off his horse and had a revelation of Jesus. Why, did, why was Paul able to do so much? Why did he write so much of the New Testament? Because he had a revelation. He had a vision 
of Jesus. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to seek the Lord until you see Jesus as he really is. Until, until you can say, nothing else matters but what Jesus wants me to do. Nothing else matters but what Jesus has planned for my life. I, 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 I know we, we have some of the, uh, some of the smartest people in, in Moscow, in, in this church. And I thank God for you, but I, I also know that, that you need to use your intelligence to seek Jesus Christ because he has the perfect picture for your life. Wrong behavior doesn't happen. It's always preceded by wrong vision or wrong thinking. The Bible, with what the Spirit reveals, what the Spirit of God will reveal to your heart, God will begin to show you things that are impossible for you to do. God will begin to show you revelation. It's impossible for you to do. Why? Because he wants to show himself mighty in your behalf. He wants to do miracles in your life. He wants to, he wants to change your life. And the only way he can do it is if you will seek him. Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If your thoughts are only about yourself, if your thoughts are only about what you need, if your thoughts are only about uh, how, how I look to everybody else, that's, you're not going to, to see, you're not going to catch the vision that God has for you. Let me just say, say this, don't be discouraged if, if everybody doesn't agree with what God is showing you. That's one of the reasons why Nehemiah didn't tell everybody, because when he started telling everybody, half the, half the people got worried that, that maybe, we should, maybe we should back off. You know, uh, when, when Moses sent in the 12 spies, uh, uh, 10 out of the 12 said, no, we need to back down, and we, we can't do this. This is... And, and the whole idea is they were looking at the situation in their own ability and in their own strength. And all the time, the whole time, God is trying to speak to them and saying, do you understand? Look, look at these grapes. Look how big they are. Do you understand? I can give this to you if you'll just trust me. I can do this in your life if you'll just trust me. Be an Abraham. And, and even if your body is dead and even if your wife's body is dead, uh, as far as conceiving children, be an Abraham and say, I trust God. I, I, God will reveal to you what he wants to do in your life. And, and, and don't, don't, say, don't immediately say, well, that can't be God because uh, I'm too old to have kids or something like that. Some of us, some of us, we, we, we're so busy looking at the, the natural that we don't understand the spiritual. It's kind of like, uh, how many of you heard of Char Charlie Brown? Anybody heard of Charlie Brown? It's a cartoon character, okay? okay. Anyway, uh, this Charlie Brown, he, he would sit down and he was thinking about what God could do in his life. He says, he said, just think. Someday these hands may heal the sick. Someday these hands may, may build mighty bridges. Someday these hands may change the destiny of mankind. And, of course, he always has this girl, Lucy, that is always putting him down, okay? You know what she says? After, after he gives his vision of what God might want to do in his life, she says, your hands... Have jolly on. She was looking at the natural. When God wanted them to look at the supernatural, God has plans for your life. Thomas Edison 
said, show me a man who is perfectly satisfied and I'll show you a failure. Show me a man who's perfectly satisfied with his life and I will show you a failure. A, a failure. Somebody who will not succeed. Why? Because they have no vision. We have, we have what we call the, the a list of, of people who had no vision. There was a man named Charles Duell. In, in, in 1899, right before the turn of the century, he said, everything that can be invented has already been invented. You hear what I'm saying? In 1899, everything that can be invented has already been invented. That's no vision. President Grover Cleveland said, sensible. Responsible women don't want to vote. <laughs> Physicist Robert Milligan says, there is no likelihood at all that we will be ever be able to harness the power of the atom. Never be able to harness the power of the atom. Lord Kelvin in 1855 says, flying machines that are heavier than air are impossible. Do you understand? The, the devil is always trying to tell us what God is showing you is impossible. He's always trying to tell you that where you are is where you're always going to be. He's trying to tell you that you're stuck and there's no way out. But I'm here to tell you that God is going to come into your life in the next month or so and he's going to begin to speak to your heart. And he's going to begin to challenge you in every situation in your life. And he's going to begin to show you great and mighty things that you don't know, know about. And he's going to turn your life around if you will let him. Vision is the key that starts it. Vision is the spark that ignites it. Vision is the gears that get things rolling. Vision is the vehicle you drive. To, to, to reach your dreams. What is vision? I've already told you. It's the perfect picture. It's given by God. Why is it so important? Because if you have no vision, you have no passion. If you have no vision, you have no passion. And God wants you to, 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 to get excited about what God can do in your life. Praise the Lord. Some have no vision or some have lost the vision that they had. There are negative, pessimistic people around you. Uh, they're, always, they're always trying to tell you it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. There was a guy uh, there at present when they were doing the first steamboat in America, the first steamboat, and, and he said, it'll never go, it'll never go, it'll never go. And then when they finally got the steamboat started and it was going... He said, they'll never stop it. They'll never stop it. <laughs> Until we, we understand what God wants to do in our life, we're like that pessimistic man. It's not going to happen in my life. It's not going to happen in my life. Well, if it does happen, everything, things will just get worse. But I'm here to tell you, well, this is what Helen Keller, I don't even know what Hel who Helen Keller is. One of the most famous blind men in America, Helen Keller. The blind woman, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, Helen Keller said, worse than being blind would be to see and yet have no vision. It's worse to have no vision than to be blind. If you don't have a vision for your life, if you're just going from day to day, if you're just, just experiencing life as it comes to you, the good and the bad, and you have no idea how these, this is going to end up because you haven't found God's plan for your life, it's worse for you than being blind. Some have lost their vision. They once had it, but they let it go. I mean, the devil doesn't want you to keep your vision. He'll try, 
try to hurt you. He'll bring people against you. He'll discourage you. You'll, you'll get some bad news here and there. I hear from pastors all the time, leaders who have lost their vision. They, they say to me, you can't, you can't get people in our area to go to church. They say you can't get people to come to evening services or to revival services. You can't get people to go uh, to give to missions. Uh, these, these pastors have lost their vision. The story is told of a, a church that had on the, across the, the front of the church, it says, where there is no vision, people perish. And for some reason or other, the W fell off. You know what it said? It said, here, there is no vision. The people perish. That would be terrible to have across the front of your church. Here, there is no vision. The people perish. God wants you to begin to seek him and, and find out what his plan for your life is. And we're talking about that dynamic of vision. Jeremiah 33, 3, I've been quoting it all night. Now I get to read it. Call to me. Call to me and I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Don't settle. Don't settle for less. Don't settle for less than God's best in your life. Don't settle for less than God's best in your life. Don't give up. Don't give up. I, everybody that, that was used of God went through their difficult times. You tell me Joseph didn't have a difficult time in prison. Don't give up. Don't, God, if God's given you a vision, I don't care what happens to you. After God gives you a vision, don't give up because God will bring you out and He will make you a success. Farmer dug a well, and before he could get anything around it, his mule fell into the, to the well. It was an old mule. Well, he said, I might as well just bury it. So he started burying the mule in the well that he dug. A strange thing happened. Every time he threw a shovel of dirt in, the, the mule stomped it down. Every time... And after a while, you know, he just filled the well up and the mule just walked out, you know. Do you understand the problems that come at you? Be like that old mule, say, I'm not going to let anything keep me down. I'm going to turn my lemons into lemonade. I'm going to, I'm going to turn my, my bad situation into, into a, 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 a miracle of God. We need people that are as stubborn as that mule. Some people have limited vision. One of the popular positive speakers in America went to the chalkboard. He drew a dot on the, on the chalkboard. I'm not going to draw one, okay? But he drew one on the chalkboard. And he asked everybody, he said, what do you see? He asked everybody in the place, what do you see? And every person in the place says, a dot. Every person said, a dot. They didn't see the rest of the chalkboard and the possibilities they had on the rest of the chalkboard. All they did was focus in on that little dot and say, that's it. That's all I see. And that's what the devil wants to do to you. What do you see in your life? Dot. What do you see in your life? I just, all I see is what's, what's always been happening in my life. I'm always a failure. I'm always missing it. And what does God want you to see? God wants you to see the rest of your life. God wants you to see the rest of your life. God wants you to see the rest of your life as he sees it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus said in Matthew 17, 20, because of your unbelief, because I say assuredly to you, 
If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible to you. And so, just so that you get that, okay, Jesus repeats it. Not, yeah, that was Matthew 17, 20. This is Matthew 21, 21. Jesus answered and said, Assuredly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to this fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. You understand, we need a vision from God. We need to see what God wants to do. We need to see what God wants us to say. Because faith is vision. Vision is faith. If we have just a tiny speck of faith, a tiny speck of just have a vision. If you just seek God until God speaks to you, whether it's from his word or whether it's from, from, from a dream or whether it's from a vision, let God speak to you. To, uh, just a, just a, a tiny vision of what God is going to do in your life. Uh, you will begin to be able to say to the mountains that are in your life, the, those hills and valleys that have, have kept you from from reaching the goal that you plan for your life. If you if you'll have faith, if you'll have a, if you'll seek God and get a vision, then you'll be able to say, I, I can see the valley, I can see the mountain, but I know that God has a plan for me, and I know that God is going to lead me, and I know that God is going to guide me, and I'm going to go from here to there. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but my I know that God will lead me one step at a time Amen. until I reach the goal that he has planned for my life. Our church is the dot on the chalkboard. It's just a tool for the real work. Big picture is people coming to hear about Jesus Christ. The big picture is for people to hear the word of God and be changed. It would, it would be nice if we had a, a, a beautiful church building, but it's more important that people come to Jesus. It'd be nice if we had, if we had space for a youth group and, and had evening services and all this other stuff, but in a sense, we need to catch what God wants to do in our life now and, and begin to do it now, and God will take care of the rest. God will provide the church. God will provide the place we need to be. God will open the doors for us. If we will, if we will seek Him, God, God has a plan and a purpose, and we need to seek Him. Paul Harvey, Paul Harvey, a, a tremendous commentator in America, passed away now is with the Lord. But he says, a blind man is bound by the limits of his touch. An ignorant man is bound by the limits of his knowledge. A great man is bound only by the limits of his vision. The only thing that limits each and every one of you in this building is the vision that God has for your life. Have you grasped hold of it? Do you know that God has a plan? Do you know that God's working in your life? Do you know that God brought you here to... To, to open your spiritual eyes to see what God can do and to begin to say, I am going to seek God so that my vision becomes unlimited. I, I, I don't want to be limited by my vision. I don't want to be limited by, the, by, by my past. I, I want God to open my spiritual eyes so I can see what he's doing. Some people have no vision. Some people have lost their vision. Some people have limited vision. God wants you to have 20-20 vision. He wants you to begin to see perfectly a clear vision of how those things ought to be. And have a vision that calls you to action. 
See, some of you need a spark of faith. Some of you need a word of faith. Some of you need a, a vision or a dream of faith. Uh, but a perfect picture, the vision that God gives you, a perfect picture will provide the power you need to become, to, uh, to, to cause you to reach the goal that God has set for your life. Perfect picture gives, provides power and propels people to preach the message of salvation. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak. It will not lie, though it, though it tarries. Wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. What am I saying? We're living in the last days. Have you heard me say that once tonight? tonight, today. Um, it's for the last days, the vision. The vision is for the last days. And we are living in the last days. Again, uh, another scripture that is not, that I did not record in my notes, Haggai chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Haggai chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth and the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Did you hear what I'm saying? Let me read it again. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth. Now, when it says, I will shake heaven and earth, my, my, spiritual, my spiritual ears opened up, okay? When it said, I will shake heaven and earth, my spiritual ears opened up. I, I, what, what am I thinking? I'm thinking that one more time, God is going to shake the earth with revival. One more time, God is going to pour out His Spirit on all flesh. One more time, we're going to see revival like we have never seen it before, like it has never been before. One more time in these last days, God is going to raise up a people. God is going to raise up you, and God is going to give you visions and dreams and prophecies, and God is going to begin to show Himself mighty in your behalf, and we are going to see people go from this place, and everywhere they go, they're going to lead people to Jesus Christ, and men and women are going to know that Jesus Christ is King and Lord of all. Once more, in a little while, I will shake heaven and earth. Hallelujah. The sea and the dry land. The oceans are not going to limit this revival. These oceans are not, the, the, dry, the deserts are not going to limit this revival. We're going to see it go forth with power and with anointing as God speaks to his people. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And I will shake nations. I will shake nations. Why are you here? Because God brought you here to shake the nation. God brought you here to shake. Did you hear what I'm saying? God brought you here to shake your nation so that so that, that, that God's spirit began to be poured out and men and women would come to know Jesus Christ. That's why you're here today. And they shall come. And I will shake all nations and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this place his glory. Do you understand what this is going to be? God's going to fill this place with his glory. I know, I know he's talking about Jerusalem, but I, I God, you can, you can use that here. God wants to fill this place with his glory. And if you will seek God, if you will cry out to God, if you will wait upon God, 
if you'll fast before God, if you will, if you will be an Abraham or a Nehemiah and say, I will seek the Lord. I, I will do what God wants me to do. I will go where God wants me to go. We will see an outpouring of the Spirit of God that flows out of Moscow and, and it flows throughout the whole earth because God has great things. Joshua, chapter 3, verse 5. Joshua, chapter 3, verse 5. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Sanctify yourself. Because God wants to begin to do miracles among you. Sanctify yourself because God has plans. He wants to show you great and mighty things that you know not. Sanctify yourself. Because God is going to begin to do miracles among you. I love that song that, said, that they sang withholding nothing. I'd like what I want to do is I want to begin to anoint people. That, that God will open their spiritual eyes and they will see the plans that God has for them. But while you're waiting to be anointed, I want you to, I want you to say to God, God, I will withhold nothing from you. I give you everything I have. Everything I am, everything I, I, I could have been without you, I give it to you. Because I know that your plan is the perfect picture for my life. Hello, this is Pastor Sergi. And I, I want to know, do you see yourself the way God sees you? Or do you have a bad picture of yourself? Come to Jesus and He will, he will recreate your vision. And you'll begin to see yourself as Jesus uh, wants you to be. If you'll pray with me right now, God will, will forgive you of your sins. Just pray with me. Father God, forgive me for my sins right now. Let the blood of Jesus Christ come and cleanse me and make me a new creation in Jesus Christ. Today I declare Jesus Christ Lord and Master of my life. Now if you prayed that prayer, that God has, has come in and cleansed you of your sin, you're to go and sin no more, but you live for Jesus Christ and let Jesus Christ be Lord in everything that you do. God bless you. We'll see you later.